Hey, how's it going? So today we're going to look at something fairly simple, which is the Arnet infrared remote control functionality. We're gonna look at a couple of different chairs, well, actually three of them, one's a surprise, and we're gonna show the process of setting it up so that you can control your TV or satellite box or whatever else that uses an infrared remote control with the joystick on your chair. Well, that's the back of it. Actually, that works fairly well. See right here, see this little tiny dot? That is the infrared transmitter. Now this is a pretty simple process, but on some chairs like Permobile, for example, there's kind of some weird things that go on that might freak you out if you're not used to setting this up. So we're just gonna run through everything real quick. And then we're also going to take a look at this here Amy Systems chair that we have. And then one other Arnet powered chair that's sitting in the back of the warehouse. So we're gonna be using this Vizio LED TV over here. It's a few years old, but uh, I think it should serve our purposes. You're gonna need the remote for your TV. I believe. There's a way to do this with computer software, but for now we're gonna start off by using the remote for the TV. Let's make sure this actually works. There we go, it turned white. And why am I hearing chains rattling outside? Hang on. Also has a lot of strange activity around this, uh, around this place. Okay, so we're gonna start off with the Permobile F3 here. This is the PJSM joystick. We have the remote for our TV. So the nice thing about this is everything is configurable from your joystick and you don't need any software or dongle or anything like that. The screen on your joystick may look a little bit different than mine, but regardless on all of these joysticks, even if you don't see the little gear icon up here, you can see kind of looks like a settings icon. All you have to do is press and hold on this top left soft key for a few seconds and you'll get a menu to come up, even if there's no icons there. There we go, now we have the setup menu. To navigate this, you basically use your joystick up and down like this, and you press right to go into the menu. And some menus have an exit, and other menus you just basically push left to get back out of. But all of the navigation here on the screen is done with your joystick. Starting at the beginning here, you wanna press and hold this top left soft key. Then we're gonna use the joystick to navigate down to IR setup, push to the right. And then we have a list of all the different devices here. There's TV one, cable satellite, DVD. Oh, what do you know? There's no mention of VCRs in here. <laughs> I, guess I'm, uh, I guess I'm dating myself here. But let's select the first one here, which is TV one. And we're gonna push to the right on the joystick. And the first thing we wanna program is on and off. So we'll push to the right. Since nothing has been set up on here yet, we get the option for learn code or exit. If you look close at the top of the joystick, you can see there's a couple of little clear windows here. One of those is an LED light, one is a ambient light sensor, and the other one is actually the receiver for learning your remote codes. Hold that upside down. There we go, for your remote codes. So what we're gonna do is select learn code. We're gonna press to the right. Now it shows a picture of a remote pointing at the joystick, and we wanna press the button we're programming two times. In this case, is on off, so that's going to be power. And as you can see there, if you don't do it quick enough, it'll cancel out. Let's go ahead and hit learn code again. We're gonna press the power button twice. And every time I press the button, it counted down from two to one, and then we got a giant green check mark. So now we can go over here, select exit, push to the right. All I'm really concerned about is power off and on and volume up and down for right now. So we're gonna to go to volume up here. We'll press to the right, right again to learn code. We're gonna press volume up twice. We get the big green check mark, exit. We'll go down to volume down, press right again, learn code, press volume down twice. Now at this point, I think we have basic control over the TV. So let's go ahead and test this out. Now I've zoomed out here a little bit so you can see everything overall, but we're gonna go down to the bottom option here that says exit. We're gonna press to the right. Then we go back to the main IR setup menu. Now you can scroll all the way to the bottom like this or if you're at the top one, just push up and it'll wrap around to the bottom. Now we're gonna hit exit again. We're back at the settings menu, go down to the bottom, hit exit one more time, and the chair wants to be restarted. You can see we have the blinking power logo here. So we're gonna turn the chair off, give it a few seconds, turn it back on. Now this is simply because it's the first time we've set up infrared on this. It's gonna go through a process, it says 100% there on the screen. It's gonna want us to restart again though. There we go. We can see here that all of the ICS seating lights are in the blinky candy cane mode. So I turn it off again, 
give it a few seconds, turn it back on. Now when it turns back on, your chair is gonna be in the lowest drive profile, which is profile one. And for whatever reason, the speed may be turned all the way down. So go ahead and use your toggle here to turn that back up or set it to wherever you normally have it set. For whatever reason, when it enables this the first time, it'll change that setting for you. Not sure why, but something it does. It may be a little bit hard to see, but this right here is actually the infrared transmitter on your joystick. So it's on the bottom and it can be kind of pointing down at the ground. So for this to be able to control your TV, in some cases, you might need to tilt your chair way back. Like if your TV is mounted high up on a wall or a shelf or something like that. But this is the part that sends the infrared signal to your TV. But now we wanna test the remote codes that we've saved into this thing. You wanna press up on this toggle if you're using the PJSM that changes your modes. So it's gonna go through your drive profiles, then your seating functions, and then we should have IR. And if you look close, you can see it says TV1. So we'll push right on the joystick. And you can see here we have a couple options, on, off, volume, up, down. So let's press to the right and see if it turns on our TV. There we go. You can see the color over there changed. And we have the boot up logo. Let's try and turn our volume up. So we're gonna go down here to volume up. Then we'll press right on the joystick again. And you can see our volume is very gradually increasing every time I press to the right. Now the only obnoxious thing here is you can't press and hold. So you saw the volume was really low. If I wanna turn it up to like 35 or something, if you press and hold on this, it's only gonna send out one command. At least with this setup, I don't know if it's different on other TVs, but at least with this setup, it's one at a time. And if you notice, every time I press to the right, this turns red and then it changes back to normal. So if you wanna turn it up, you can't just go like this super quick. You have to wait till that changes back from red and then it'll go up one step at a time. So that's a bit obnoxious. There may be a way around that. Um, if any of you use this regularly, let me know. But for this basic overview, I'm not sure how to deal with that. Now to get back into drive mode, you can go through the menu and choose exit, but that only gets you back to this main screen. So I found the easiest thing to do is just use your mode button again, and that'll put you right back to drive. If you have Bluetooth set up on your chair, it may toggle through that but activating the mode switch is kind of the easiest way to get back to your actual driving mode. Next up, we're gonna grab this here Amy Systems chair, and we're going to see if the process is any different, setting up the infrared on that. So let's drive this thing over here. Man, it's really hard to film stuff that basically acts like a mirror, but this is a little bit easier since I'm not sitting in this chair. Now, like I was saying earlier, you may notice that we don't have a settings icon anywhere here on the screen. This chair has a light kit, which obviously you can turn on and off. And this one is the hazards. And it makes that horrific chirping sound. There we go. But even though we don't have the settings icon, same thing applies. Press and hold this for a few seconds and we will get the same settings menu. Now I haven't tried to use the IR setup on any chair other than a Permobile. So I'm kind of curious to see. We do still have the little window up here that we point our remote at while we're programming it. But let's go down here to, whoops, the swing away wasn't all the way down. There we go. So let's go down here to IR setup. We're gonna press to the right. We get a very similar setup here, albeit a much larger screen. It actually looks a lot nicer too. So I'll press to the right to go TV. We're going to on off, learn code. Same thing as before. Let's grab our remote here, press the button twice. Nope, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Hmm. There we go. So that's something else I've noticed on other chairs as well. Well, other permobiles that I've tried. Sometimes pressing the button quick versus pressing it and holding it slower will make a difference when it reads the code. So you might have to try it a couple of times. If you get that red X, try pressing it a little bit longer. Hold it for like half a second, maybe one second. You just gotta play around a little bit. So now that's saved, let's go down to exit. Then volume up, learn code. So it seems like not doing it too quickly is the key thing here. Exit, volume down, learn. There we go. In theory, it's programmed. 
Now what I don't know is if this is going to require a restart. So let's exit out of all this. Uh, oh, look at that, it does want to restart. Interesting. Now this being a CGSM2, the joystick is a little bit different. The power toggle is always up, so on and off is always up. And then we have these extra mode and profile buttons. Those I think will come in handy here in a minute, but let's restart. Turn it back on. Yeah, it's gonna do the second restart, interesting. For some reason I was thinking that was Permobile only, but like I said earlier, I haven't tried this on any other chairs, so who knows? Ah, same thing. Our speed is turned all the way back down. And our profile is lower. I normally keep this on profile three. There we go. Okay, so, seeing as how we have a mode button, let's try pressing that. Seating, infrared control, hey, hey. TV, on, off, and uh, let's see what it does. Hey, the TV's turning on. Magical. Now let's try our volume up here. Yep, that appears to work. Same deal, you can't press and hold. Doesn't auto repeat. Actually, it sounds like it's auto repeating, but the TV is not responding to it. Interesting. Volume down. Yep, seems to be working. All right, cool. Well, there you go. Uh, getting back out of this, simply press mode. There you go, back to your drive profile. So that is one nice thing with this joystick. The screen's a little bit bigger, easier to read, and we have these extra buttons here. As opposed to this guy that's missing the extra buttons and everything is a little bit smaller. Maybe I'm just getting older and need glasses or something, but larger screens seem nicer to me. However, you do wind up smashing into things. And why are there bags of garbage? They always end up in the background in any shot. Anytime I'm filming in here, what is that? Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. I'm attempting to drive two chairs at once here using my elbow on the F3 and my hand on this one. Huh, well apparently you can drive a rear wheel drive and a front wheel drive with your elbow at the same time. Let's go get the last chair I wanna take a look at. That's right, it's a soccer chair. I don't know why you would need to control a TV from one of these chairs, but apparently it's possible. Alrighty, here we have the soccer chair. This also has a CJSM2 on it, but this chair does not have any seating functions. It does not have any light controls or anything. So all of these soft keys are unlabeled. By the way, if you need to change the clock on your chair, same thing. All you have to do is press and hold on this top left button for a few seconds, and ta-da, we get the user menu. Now I've disabled all of the beeping sounds on this, so it's not gonna make any noise. Anyways, let's go down here to IR setup. Oh, I just realized I don't have the remote. Uh, mode. Okay, we're back into drive. Yoink. Okay, into the user menu. Then down here to IR setup. TV, on off, learn code. Okay, it's saved. Volume up, learn code. Uh, volume up, volume up. Exit, volume down, learn, volume down. And I'm assuming this thing will also want to restart because everything else has. Mm-hmm, interesting. Eh, also turn the speed all the way down. So that's an RNet wide thing, interesting to note. It always resets you down to the minimum speed. So we will mode over here to IR mode, TV, then on off. And our TV has come to life. We probably don't even need to check the volume up and down, but we'll do it anyways. Yeah, there you go. Volume's going up and volume's going down. Same thing here to get out of this, hit mode. Then we're back in the destroyer of all things mode. Oh, that's hard on remotes. Come here, you. Did you survive? Are you okay?
I think that's enough of that. <laughs> Let's get back into a regular chair. <laughs> well, that's scary in here. <laughs> And there you go, a basic overview for setting up infrared remote controls on RNET powered wheelchairs. I don't know why I keep holding up this Amazon remote. This is not infrared, but it's a remote. I am curious though, how many of you actually use this function and if there's anything you'd like to add or if anything's different with your particular setup. Also, has anyone used the RNET infrared configurator software? I'm kind of curious to see how that works. I have not actually played with it yet. I think the software has a library of a bunch of different brands of uh, infrared and stereo and TV controls and whatever. But if you would like to see a video about that, let me know. This is one of those things I just personally haven't really messed around with much. I don't use infrared remotes typically in my daily life. Side note, I've been out here at the warehouse going full steam ahead on the Amy Systems review video. I know everyone keeps asking about that, but that should be done here within the next week. And, uh, other than the live stream tomorrow, I think it should be maybe the next video you see on this channel. So anyways, there you go. Thanks for watching. All that YouTube closing stuff, blah, 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 something, something. Um, I'll see you tomorrow on the live stream. Thanks for watching.